So just the other day I was packing up this desk from shooting a video and we had different sticks of RAM sitting on the table. I was putting it away in my drawers to keep everything nice and organised and a question came into my mind. Is there actually any performance difference in the little sodium memories as opposed to their desktop counterpart? <laughs> Hey guys, CP Mod here back with another video and with Skylake now out and about, we're actually getting now notebooks with these Skylake processors, which means we can run DDR4 on them. But the question is, is there actually a difference in performance between the desktop DDR4 modules and the laptop ones? So today we're going to test that out. But before we do that, we need to understand a few things and mostly how RAM actually affects your performance. And well, we found out in the past that gaming performance is not really a Affected by the amount or speed of your RAM. Now obviously there are a few exceptions and having enough RAM to actually run the game will definitely help out there but in day-to-day -day usage RAM isn't going to be the main effector when it comes to gaming. You're going to be looking at CPUs and GPUs. So I guess we might as well just jump straight into testing. Now as you can see in front of me I don't exactly have a laptop with a Skylake processor. I only have one in my hand right here so unfortunately we don't have one in-house to do our regular testing but I I did jump down to a PC store where they had a little origin shelf and they had one of the laptops with the 6700K on display so we used that for our testing. I grabbed myself a memory stick, loaded up the test that we'll mention in just a moment as well as a program called Specky to find out what was actually in the laptop or alternatively I could have just looked it up online. But if you want to know more about Specky you can find it out in that video right there. Now it turned out the laptop that we were testing had an i7-6700K at 4GHz paired up with some Kingston HyperX Impact 2133 laptop memory. It also too features a 980M GPU, but we're not really worried about a GPU as today we'll be mainly focusing on RAM testing as opposed to CPU or motherboard or any other parts in the system, including the GPU. So whilst we had the same CPUs, it's not really going to be sort of the most interesting thing as we're more focusing on what the RAM can actually do. On the desktop side, we tried to pair it up as close as possible by grabbing self our Kingston HyperX. Fury 2133 MHz desktop kit. Both of these are two DIMMs and they come in at 16 gigabytes each. So they're kind of as close as I could possibly get. Other parts that made up our desktop was a Gigabyte Z170X Gaming G1. Also too, we got ourselves a H55 cooler just to keep everything nice and cool and a GTX 780 Ti just for some video grunt there. But once again, we're not testing the CPU or the GPU side so it doesn't really matter that much what we got in there but we tried to pair things up almost as close as possible obviously apart from the video card because that's a lot more powerful. We also too ran the CPU and GPU at stock clocks because I didn't really feel like blowing up a display computer and also too we don't really want to blow up our own CPU but time for some tests. We went ahead and grabbed our programs including Ida 64's RAM test. We also do grabbed ourselves RealBench 2.4 as well as Mem Tweak Kit and that rounds out the test that we did. So let's get into some numbers. As we can see jumping through the charts there is a tiny little tiny tiny little tiny bit of a difference between the desktop and laptop RAM module so there isn't really that much much there. Jumping into some more real world tests once again we found there wasn't really that much of a difference. The limitations more came in storage and those types of applications as opposed to the limitations in RAM. So I tried my best to go ahead and try different scenarios of using laptop and desktop RAM but honestly I couldn't exactly find that much different. Now obviously there are going to be a lot of variations and when it comes to testing this for yourself there's going to be a ton of variations unless you have sort of almost if not the same hardware it's going to be very hard to scientifically prove whether one is better than the other and unfortunately on the market today we don't exactly have a desktop motherboard that supports sodium slots or otherwise your notebook RAM as well as your more mainstream desktop type of RAM and finally to round this out if that wasn't enough laptop RAM modules usually run at lower voltages and lower speeds than their desktop counterparts meaning that they're going to perform not as good as their desktop ones because they're already running at a lower speed 
speed. So in conclusion, there is almost, if not no difference between the DDR4 modules we tested out today. But once again, do keep in mind if you're going to be testing this out yourself with those aforementioned benchmarking programs, which you also do link down below, you do need to note that desktop and laptop parts are always different. Laptop ones are going to be favoring less power usage and slower speeds to achieve them, whilst the desktop ones are just going for as fast as possible. And also too, until we get a motherboard that not only supports sodium memory slots as well as full-size desktop ones, this kind of test is always going to be difficult to achieve, even if we're running almost the same amount of parts as things like motherboards and CPUs can sometimes come into play. Now with that being said, also too, DDR4 might also too be seeing some modifications in their specifications and also to some more optimizations in the future, so we might see DDR4 completely throwing out the scales in terms of what we got here today. But for the time being, there is almost, if not no difference between DDR4 desktop and DDR4 notebook modules. Overall guys, give us a like if you like this test and want to see more like that. Also to get subscribed if you want to see some more testing on laptops and desktops and all those good things. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. What happened?